Hey everybody, before I get into the video, I wanted to let everybody know that we're running a sale on our Wild Gain shirts on our website for only $10. Um, so make sure you go check out the link in the description box below and check them out and get them for the holidays. Um, while editing the videos, um, I realized that I'm having some camera issues. So I feel, I think I'm going to have to upgrade my camera. Um, I've had it for three years and it's just kind of dying out on me which is too bad because it's a nice cheap camera that's worked for a long time. Anyway, while editing the video I realized that some of the Friday footage kind of got messed up so I wanted to kind of recap Friday's hunt before we got into Saturday and uh, show you guys some of our action. So Friday morning I went into a box blind that we've never sat before. It's over a brassica food plot that didn't turn out. I don't know why, but uh, it, the seed just didn't germinate. Um, so we kind of sat in the box blind, hoping that we'd catch a buck, at least check in the field. And uh, we ended up seeing two does uh, about 80 to 90 yards out in the brush. And then we had two small bucks come in and bump them around and grunt and running around. And uh, at one point, one of the bucks actually um, kind of postured for the other buck and was trying to be dominant and run him off. Um, so that was kind of exciting. Uh, eventually the weather kind of came in and there was kind of blizzard-like conditions in November. It was kind of cool. Um, and we, we left the stand at about 11 o'clock. We had to get some stuff done back at the cabin. So for the afternoon hunt, it got really windy um, after the snow moved out. And I wanted to make sure that we were down out of the wind and in a drainage um, trying to catch some bucks cruising down there as well as just get out of the wind and so we don't have any stands down there Hunter sat down in that area before and uh, just kind of sat on the ground in the chairs like we usually do um, and just kind of sat there at the edge edge of a overgrown old field and we ended up having two different doe family groups come in uh, one of them was a doe and a fawn, and they got into less than five yards, which was pretty cool. Uh, they they saw us, the doe saw us, but she didn't really think we were a threat or we weren't anything, so she just kind of went on doing her own thing, and uh, just kind of shows I didn't have any, we had no leafy wear, ghillie suits on or nothing, you just stay still, and the deer are probably not going to see you, so... I was really exciting and then right before dark we had uh, a doe and two fawns come in and I was really surprised there was no even small bucks down there chasing those does around. Um, those are obviously two mature does who um, are fertile and you know you'd think that there'd be bucks down there chasing them but um, it just shows that the bucks know which does in heat and they really don't pester them once they find a hot doe and obviously there just wasn't one in our in that area. So Saturday, it was supposed to get really cold. It was supposed to get to 13 degrees at night. The spot that I was sitting on was on the north part of our property. And I had a feeling that there was gonna be some bucks cruising the north part of the fence with the south wind, uh, checking for does and uh, traveling that fence. So we'll get into the action and uh, show you guys the exciting hunt.
is when you wish you never tried to video Hans. In hindsight, I should have just shot him. He came straight in front of me, and he was looking this way, and I had no way to grab my bow until he was, like, right on top of me. Because he was looking the whole time. And I couldn't get the camera on him. And by the time I could get to my bow, because I was going to shoot him with or without the camera, he's a huge frame deer. He just has no genet, like he has no right side. By the time I could get my bow, he was already past the one shooting lane I had. Boys and girls, I think I found the key to staying warm on an all-day sit like this. I wanted to check. I brought this old camo thermos we had. And I filled it up with hot chocolate because coffee's gross. You know, I'm still a boy, but still warm. So I took a couple sips of it, and I already feel warm. This is going to be a key today. Hopefully this thermos works all day long. The only thing that's cold on me right now is my hands. So, if anybody knows any really good gloves, let me know. Both of my 
my hoods up and when I went there it's I stopped and so I was like trying to figure it out and I somehow got my hood down and I somehow got it on there and it happened deer is the deer that dad shot this morning. Dad shot a buck this morning and he thinks that the arrow got deflected and it hit him further back than he wanted to because the deer was quartering away pretty hard so he wanted to shoot back but it looked like it got, got deflected and so I'm sitting here like I saw those I saw two couple bucks come in after the big seven and all these bucks are coming from the same way. They're all doing the exact same thing. The cruising bucks. This is our fence row right here. There's a pasture. And right in front of me is our sedan grass. And as you can tell behind me, there's a draw, and there's a draw over there. <clears throat> and what these bucks are doing is they're following this fence. We got a south wind. And, um,. I'm thinking that uh, in the, with the wind going like this, they're walking the south border and they're checking for does and they're trying to cross doe tracks. It snowed Thursday night and this is the most heavily used trail that I've seen on the property in the past day and a half that there's been snow. So I knew it was going to be a good hunt. And um, I, I was I've been prepared to sit all day long because it's November 10th, it's gonna be good. And um, those two, the, the big seven came in and I couldn't get them on video because the way the, the camera arm here is gonna be set up, I, I couldn't get around this tree right in front of me. So I couldn't, I didn't shoot, I couldn't get a shot. And there's a really short shooting lane here. And so, uh, this time after that happened, I put the GoPro, I put the GoPro to where these deer are walking, and I was going to shoot them either way, and that buck came in, dad shot a buck this morning, it was a bad hit, um, I think he thinks it deflected a, a, on the limb and hit him in the leg, and he wasn't doing too good, he couldn't walk very well, so I'm just happy, it's, hopefully I spot up the process we I hate to see that but um, I, I'm shaking I'm shaking like leaf guys this is awesome oh god it's so exciting yeah he's a nice buck he doesn't he doesn't have that much for brow times but I, I saw him and he's had the arrow in him so I had I was I was not letting that deer go I'm shaking so hard right now. Holy cow. Okay, so <clears throat> I can't really tell with the GoPro footage, but I was able to glass the um, arrow, and it looks bright red, so I'm going to get down and, and go take a look at the arrow and uh, see. It's been like 20, 30 minutes so, or so, so kind of get down and slowly work my way, but not bump too hard, so... We'll see you guys on the ground. All right, guys. So I just found the arrow. Just picked it up. Really wasn't hard to find. Dang it! You can tell my white fletchings are red. This is that trail that I was talking about on the stand. It snowed Thursday night and it's beat down. So. Put this arrow back in the quiver and uh, get on the blood trail here. Here's the problem with this farm is there's a crap ton of coyotes. So we cannot leave. I'm gonna get, try to get closer to this deer and try to shoot this coyote when it comes in. that 
fuck. Oh man. There's my shot right there, guys. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, thank you, Mr. Deer. I'm sorry you had to suffer. Thank you, Mr. Deer. I'm gonna let the other guys know that he's down. Oh, I'm so glad I was able to put this buck down faster. As you can tell behind me, the coyotes are going absolutely insane. I'm probably gonna stand here and shoot a coyote coming in trying to get him. But, oh man, he's, this right here is by far the biggest buck I've ever shot, by far and away. And that's so cool. I can't wait to get the guys in here and get some better pictures of him and I don't even know what to say honestly but I'm glad I was able to put this deer down um, in a matter of seconds dead shot must have hit a limb or something because it hit him in the back and I know he was pretty upset he was pretty upset with himself on uh, he didn't think it was a good shot and then when I told him that this happened he was really upset but that's I mean that's bow hunting and I'm just honestly so blessed to be able to have sped up the process that way this buck wasn't suffering because he wasn't doing too good this is my biggest deer by far so I'm gonna call the guys and um, let them know I found him he's on the ground and uh, talk to you guys in a minute well guys here he is I'm thinking he's a four-year-old he's my biggest deer to date um, Overall, it was a really good morning. I had the big seven come in and uh, almost got a shot at him. And honestly, I'm glad I didn't. I was messing around with the camera trying to get him on video. And um, if that, if I would have shot the big seven, I wouldn't have been able to legally shoot this deer. And I don't think the deer would have died. Dad um, had a arrow deflect, and it actually hit this deer in the rump. It got deflected by um, a, a limb, and it shot him straight in the rump and it actually broke his leg so when I saw at first I saw this buck coming through the uh, trees coming right out into the field the same route all the other bucks took and I saw him like oh wow that's a really big buck and I'm gonna have to take a really good look at him and either way uh, and I came in he came in and I saw he had a, the arrow stuck in him and I'm like no way so so really glad I was able to shoot this deer and uh, speed up the process. I put a perfect double lung shot on him and uh, he didn't go like 60 yards. So overall, really excited about tagging out. It's kind of, it's always bittersweet to tag out and um, be done for the year because you it's something you look forward to all year long and then when it happens, it's like, now, now what do I do, you know? So maybe we'll start scouting public land driving around, seeing pressure, and getting ready for next year, and getting ready for uh, late season. So I think that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Make sure you hit the like button and sub to subscribe. We're going to have a lot of good action coming, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.